What is going on everybody? It's Alex come back in another video and today we are doing round two of five of this mock draft. Alright, so we've had some very mixed opinions about this last draft. Uh this last round per se. Mainly circling around this one, but there's a couple other picks where some of you guys had some backlash on. That's okay. The whole entire point of me doing this is because I want to have a little bit of fun. I mean, I it's not the most realistic thing in the world sometimes to have the Steelers trade up for a quarterback. However, we have seen teams trade up as well. I mean, it took a lot of draft capital in the first place, and teams like the Packers can easily trade up with those value, uh, with that value of picks. However, I just want to have a little bit of fun, uh, and you guys, I'm sure, do enjoy actually seeing something different than copy and paste, hence why you guys still follow me, right? Now, let's just go right into round two. Um, it's been quite a long day back in Texas. So, uh, yeah, back in my dorm room. Hopefully I can upload these videos faster. There's zero guarantee on that. Uh, just because everything has been pretty garbo since usually the IT team stuff are down. However, we're here at pick 33. Jags, this one is a pretty obvious one to me. I do this almost every, if not every single draft. Asante Samuel Jr. is going to be my guy here. Uh, I like Darian Kendrick possibly in the squad, but with how aggressive CJ Henderson is... I don't know if Darian Kendrick's really going to be that guy with who's a previous uh, former wide wide receiver here. Uh, Sante Samuel Jr. has been one of, if not the best, uh, corner ar around in like the ACC. So I like that. Sante Samuel Jr. has definitely been the best player on Florida State. Darian Kendrick has been doing a really good job too, only allowing barely over 100 yards. I could, per I'd be perfectly fine with him going in the first round as well. So you guys want a sneaker pick right there, Jets. Jets, you need an outside cornerback, right? So, I mean, realistically, can we go Darian Kendrick here? Absolutely. Let's look at the other options, though. And, I mean, again, Travis Etienne's here. Najee Harris is here. You already have your power back. I mean, at this point, like, how far can Travis Etienne fall? That's my real question. Uh, I mean, at this point, you kind of have to pair him up with somebody. And, again, you're going to be getting the number one running back in the class. I think you just got to go with it, guys. We could go edge here as well, but we're going to be rocking Travis Etienne out of Clemson. We've been doing that for a long time as well. You guys do need a true running back uh, dynamic weapon. And if like since you guys are all Sam Darnold lovers, you know, regardless of who the quarterback is, you do need some more weapons probably in that backfield. I mean, I'm pretty happy with how the squad is up front with the wide receivers, but I mean, again, there's always room for improvement there. Getting ETN is going to be a true solid uh, three down back. Again, Najee Harris might go above him, but again, both these guys have some tread on their tires. Watch out for Javante Williams to be the first running back off the board. That would be quite an interesting one. Now, uh, Dolphins, where do we go with you guys? So we got you, Penny Suwell, as well as uh, Jalen Waddell. So that's, that's a pretty damn good haul, right? Now, at this spot, we have a couple routes we can go. We can go like a Dylan Moses or... Um, even like I, I don't like Nick Bolton here. If you want to even go for not camera, fuck a camera ground. But um, you guys get the idea. We could be going for like a Dylan Moses here, or I think we could go for a Najee Harris here. Honestly, I think that might be the best move. Uh, we could be going. I don't need. I don't think we need to get another guard. So let's actually rock Najee Harris here. Uh, I mean, you guys love Najee. Why not get him here? He's he's just a true bell cow back. Somebody's gonna be in a RB RB. BC role is going to be excellent since he does have some tread on his tires already. Uh, he's going to be able to work really well with a guy like Matt Breida. I don't know how long Matt Breida is there, but of course you have Miles Gaskin, um, Asavian Ahmed. That's going to be great. So Najee Harris, I mean, uh, we don't get to draft our center like we usually do because Creed Humphrey went at 26. So there you go. You're having a pretty good haul so far. Now, also he's with Tua again. That's going to be pretty fun. Uh, Falcons, that kind of takes away your elite running back situation. That kind of sucks, right? That That's kind of a big issue. However, we all know that they definitely need some extra pass rush up in here. And if we're... Uh, Aiden Hutchinson's returning to to, um, to campus, so we're not going to be picking him this draft. However, there are guys like Boogie Basham on here, Jalen Phillips. And honestly, we are going to be going Jalen Phillips here. I love Jalen Phillips. Yes, he almost retired because of concussions. One of you guys did point that out. However, he's just been a beast. He's a baller. I can see him going in the first round with his talent. He's just an absolute stud. I love him to death. Now, Eagles, uh, you guys either need a safety, uh, sl uh, not a slot corner. I mean, you guys could use a slot corner if you wanted to. Uh, boundary corner or a linebacker. Here is where we can pick up a guy like Dylan Moses and be perfectly fine with it. There's a high there's a high bust factor here with Dylan Moses with how he covers. However, his ceiling is just too good. We could, of course, drop down and get Jabril Cox later. But, I mean, I'm telling you guys, this is where you got to take a guy like Dylan Moses if he falls. That's going to be a great pick there. 
And again, we're going to be sticking with not trading any picks here because Dylan Redunds is still on the board. Um, we could try to get Jackson Carmen in the third if we wanted to. If not, Tevin Jenkins, Brady Christensen in the fourth if we wanted to. Um, but I think this is just too good to val uh, too good of value to pass up. Dylan Redunds is here again. If you guys want to look at him, um, there you go. Pause. You do your thing. But Dylan Redunds has been doing a really damn good job there in North Dakota State. And there's a good reason. There's a good reason for it. You guys need to get a true proven tackle. As a redshirt senior, he's excellent. You don't want a guy who could be also a guard. Um, I think you want a true. I think you want a true tackle here. So let's go, Dylan Redons. Let's have a little bit of fun here. Get some extra protection there for Joey. Now, Lions. This is a spot where we could trade back. All right. Let's look at the guys who are on the board. You have J2FLA here. So teams that might need a defensive lineman. Uh, teams that might need a tight end. There's teams that could need a center as well um, as potentially a guard. So with that being said, there's another team that I I love trying to trade them up. And we're going to, obviously, if this pick becomes too much of a hassle, um, if this trade is going to become too much of a hassle, we'll deal with it. But um, as of right now, we are going to be dealing with the Dolphins and the Lions. So I'm going to be commentating over this, but we'll see if like this actually appears to be a legit option here. So if we can opt for a three in exchange for, okay, so we can't even get a five out of them. That's a little bit embarrassing. So if we could get a next year four. So this is going to be a, this is gonna be a rough trade, all right? So if we want to look at this. It's a second and a third for a second and a next year five, which, again, we could always trade up into the other rounds. But let's look at the other needs that this team could use. Um, I mean, the Dolphins, they could use, they definitely need a center, right? So I don't think they need to trade up this spot given how much value it, there is. However, um, so that's obviously we're not going to be going that route. However, there are other guys on the board like Trey Smith for a team that could use a guard. I'm looking at a team similar to uh, the Chargers where, of course, they did get Elijah Vera Tucker. So they don't need a guard anymore. So there, there's like a lot of issues right there. The Bears could trade up, of course, for a tackle. I mean, I think they already went for one. Yeah, they did. I've gotta got to check over these draft picks again. But um, there is a team that needs a tackle, a team that's not too far away. I already mentioned them. It is not the Dolphins. It is the Chargers going up with uh, with the Lions here. So this is gonna be interesting. Uh, we're not gonna, we're gonna pull out that sixth the fifth rounder just to get a taste of what we can trade up for. I mean, man, we're able to trade up a fourth. I mean, shoot. Um, again, I don't think you guys are gonna be willing to trade back five spots for anything less than a fourth round pick. So to make it realistic, we're gonna do that. Uh, sending our fourth that of course we got from Miami in order to trade up. To be able to get Alex Leatherwood out of Alabama. That's going to be a great pick. Uh, he's, he can play guard if you want him to. But man, Alex Leatherwood's going to be a steal at this spot. I love that pick. Sorry, Niners. Um, I know that you guys probably want him as a guard. So, unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, Giants here, you know, we can go a multitude of routes. I mean, if you're going to cut Evan Ingram or trade him, that's obviously a, an option. Uh, I mean, I know you just signed, I think, like Nick Harris to a contract. So you don't need one of... Uh, like an interior offensive lineman as a center, but you could take a guard because I'm pretty sure by Tony, that's not by Um, Zeitler has been pretty ass. So that's definitely something we're looking at. Darian Kendrick as well. Teams that might need a corner. Let's check out what the Broncos did. I want to check out to see, uh, who, what we did for them. They did get Caleb Farley. So there's a team right here in the Panthers that would be probably taking a corner. I don't think we can trade back here. I love trading back for you guys, but I don't think we can trade back from Darian Kendrick to be a true boundary corner. Uh, it's just it's too good to pass up and let's let's definitely rock it you know it's it's definitely something you need you drafted a first round corner in of course um and of course deandre baker obviously that whole situation f fell through the roof but uh darren kendrick is an excellent excellent corner i got him in, you I got him for you guys in the last draft it's worth the pick i love it to death there now panthers fans you just traded up right and that's kind of an issue because you lost some picks and you guys didn't, you guys weren't too happy. You guys wanted to get Trey Lance. I seriously don't think that's the right move, but you know, you guys can of course disagree with me all you want. However, there are guys like Pat Fryermuth on the board. There's also guys like, of course, Trayvon Morig on the board, Rondale Moore. So it is an interesting idea, um, but we're going to think about potentially allowing the cheese heads to move back up. This might not be the spot. But I think this is where the Cowboys make a minute trade up. We're going to make a minute trade up with the Cowboys in order to select Trayvon Morig. I know it doesn't look like he's going to be taken, but I'm sure a team like the Eagles might be like willing to trade up a little bit. Like we'll we'll see where we can find this very likely category 
If we can trade a fifth, and then maybe we could put in the seventh there. If we could swap seventh, we don't need to swap sevens. Uh, if we could just throw those couple picks in there, that's going to be probably very beneficial to our squad, which of course will hurt us in the long run because the round five will be like, where the hell are the picks? But that's okay. We we got plenty of picks for the next years as well. Trayvon Roig's going to be the perfect pick here. No reason to discuss it. You, we've heard it a billion times. Arlington, um, Fort Worth, right next to each other. Tra Trayvon Roig is a guy who I think could go at at highest fifteen. Like, I would, I'd be fine with him being at, like, 15, for Christ's sakes. Like, he's just that good. He's a very talented player all around. I don't know why he's not getting first-round hype. But, you know, at this spot, it's definitely worth the pick. Broncos, where do we go with you guys? Um, there's a multitude of routes we can go. I love the trade-back route. I think I'm still going to stick with it because I have a target on a linebacker later on, i.e. Jabril Cox. So, looking at the cor guys who are on the board, we have J2 Ofele still here. So, the Lions can honestly move up again and then uh, select J2 Ofele if we want to. Uh, there are teams like, of course, the Raiders that could be trying to move up for J2 Ofele or Davion Nixon. Given the fact that Davion Nixon is probably going to be there, I don't think the Lions would want to move up. I think they're pretty secure. Uh, we might see the Raiders move up twice. I know it's maybe not the Raiders thing to do, but then again, it's like... Guys, just deal with it. <laughs> like you guys don't have to. You guys don't have to have 100% um, realism because the draft is different each year. Oh, my mistake, guys. Of course, my dumbass didn't realize they're in the same fucking division. So with that being said, we have to look at other trade options here. There's still Trey Smith on the board. I really like that a lot. Let's see where the Dolphins are at. That's too big of a trade, guys. Uh, looking at teams that could use a guard. I mean the Bears. But the Niners, I'm pretty sure, did the Niners trade up or trade back? I think they traded back a couple spots with uh, with the Raiders, actually. The Niners are going to be trading up now in order to select Trey Smith. You guys might say, oh, he has heart problems. Dude, get out of here, homie. Like, straight up, get out of here. Heart problems, yeah. He cleared his med his physical, homies. Like, straight up, ugh. Like, when people try to come at me saying that, it's like, dude, there, there's literally, if you watch any, uh, you guys are going to get so pissed if I send a fucking seventh for that. You guys will get an extra six to move back a couple spots. All right, deal with it. Um, this is a mathematical model. Again, this is all based off of what real pick value has been in the past. So we are going to be sending a six back. And again, that's extra value for us to trade up. We're going to be getting Trey Smith here. I mean, he's just a maul mauler run blocker. He's pretty damn good in the past game as well. Maybe not going to be your five-star athlete, but... I mean, dude, I think he's a first-rounder. I think he's very, very much slept on. That's definitely going to be a great pick. You're going to solidify that line for whatever quarterback you want to put in there. You guys who want a quarterback, I mean, I'm telling you, if you're not getting Trey Lance, you shouldn't be going that way. And that's just like the basic facts. Uh, Panthers, where do we go with you guys now? Uh, we could go a multitude of routes. You know, there still is, there are still our cornerbacks on the board like Tyson Campbell. But I think we're going to get better value in the later rounds with the corner. Uh, tackle wise, we could be going after one, but again, all these dudes like uh, Daniel Falele, they're not worth it. They're not worth this pick. Usually, I would get us like um, a linebacker at the spot, and I mean there are some linebackers on the board, but we already took one. So if we're gonna be looking at Josh Myers, that'd be interesting. But this is another trade back spot. This is another trade back spot. So we're gonna be finding a team like the Raiders trying to jump and try to solidify the defensive front. Now we can do it. <laughs> now we can do it. So the AFC, we got the Raiders moving up with the Panthers. Panthers, again, you're trying to collect some extra value at this spot. So we're going to see if we can trade a fourth and maybe get like a, not even a six in return. So this is a little bit buggy of us. This is a little bit buggy right here. There's no way. We're going to be sending that potential six back as well um, just so we could try to move up in the draft position. I mean, yeah, it is like a big jump with pick value, especially with J2FLA on the board. So we're definitely going to be picking that, though. J2FLA, um, be able to beef up that defensive front. I mean, man, look at look at your game now. You have, like, uh, not look at your game. Look at your draft. You now have two of the first-round talents who are very high, very high level of prospect value uh, in the NFL. So this might not be very realistic, but it's just how the board fell. Now, Lions, where do we go with you guys? Um, you guys just got jumped for the best defensive lineman in the class, arguably. This is where Davion Nixon is going to be going. Okay, I don't know why they're disgustingly underrating him, but he is Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Absolute stud coming out of Iowa. Should be a first-round pick as well. So, I mean, I don't know why TDN's doing that. And again, we're going to be living, uh, leaving out Nick Benito from this draft. Otherwise, he should be going in the first as well. It's just it's not fair. It's really not fair to him. 
It's like, it's just ridiculous. Leave me, of course, I mean, every time you guys get a freaking nutgasm over this. Uh, Pat Ferrari me with to go at 45, you know, just to the Jags. I mean, I, do I need to explain this pick again? It's just a match made in heaven. I don't think anybody's going to complain about that. And it's not like I plan each draft for Pat Fryer Muth to fall. It's just, it, that's just the way it does. Every single time. And Amon Ra is falling too. So that's another interesting one. Now, Broncos, uh, this is where we could consider going after a linebacker like Nick Bolton. Uh, it's either Nick Bolton or Jabril Cox here. And you know what? Let's just get, let's just get a true run stopper in Nick Bolton. It's going to be, uh, just, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah, you were in a very pass-heavy division with Justin Herbert there and with Patrick Mahomes, but Nick Bolton's not shabby in pass game either. He's somebody with a much higher ceiling, and in a Vic Fangio defense, I think that's where he can reach his best ceiling. So honestly, I like that pick overall. I'm not going to shy away from it whatsoever. Now, this pick is going to be fun. Uh, we got, of course, the Patriots here, and there's Rondell Moore on the board. Like, that's insane. That's absolutely insane to me. Like, Rondell Moore is like, oof. Like, oof. Like, can you pass that up on that on that defense? Like, on that offense, man? Like, that's a little too good. We gotta go Rondale Moore as a true gadget weapon. He and Kyle Pitts are gonna make whatever quarterback back there really damn happy. I love Rondale Moore. I'm doing a scouting report on him soon, so keep your eyes out for that as well. Let's definitely rock it. Panthers, we're here again. Where do we go? Can we go a cornerback here? Yeah, we can go Tyson Campbell all we want. I don't know if that's exactly, like, the best route to go, though. Um, again, I think that the best route would be possibly trading down or getting Josh Myers. Again, uh, you guys might not need a, uh, a center. You guys might need a guard though. You guys have to remind me about this one, Panthers fans, because you guys are the, probably the most vocal out of all my fans by far. Like, I know that you guys definitely need, you possibly need somebody on the interior. I know you need left tackle, like it's no one's business, but we'll, we'll, we'll address that. Um, with the value that's on the board right now with Daniel Fale LA probably being your best guy, we're not going to be doing that. That's a little bit bullshit. But with freaking um, Josh Myers on the board, can you give that up? I don't think so. This is where you just get best value. Uh, you've, you've traded down a lot. You've gotten some good picks. Get Josh Myers. Have a little bit of fun there. So for the Cardinals, uh, we're going to be looking, obviously, at edge rusher. Because what? Didn't we get Eric Stokes, I believe, in this uh, in the first round? Yeah, we got Eric Stokes, which is a great pick. Wonderful pick. And, of course, we could have went after, probably tried to trade up for a guy similar to Jalen Phillips. Because uh, I like him in this scheme. However, there is somebody on the board who, I mean, he has potential to be a bust, right? On a team that is so young, like the Cards, where, of course, some of their best pieces are old. Those are the ones that we're recycling out, Chandler Jones, and as well as Patrick Peterson. Um, there's there's two routes we can go. Jason Away, which, updated information, he is apparently tested in the four twos. Yeah. Four two forty, um, which obviously he probably doesn't play at that speed. But let's just let's let that sink in. Uh, or we could be going for a more aggressive cornerback in Tyson Campbell here. So there's just there's two routes we can go. We can get the cornerback, the Georgia boys, which of course could be fun. So if you guys want that, we can go do that in the next draft. I think we really need to get some extra pass rushing here uh, because I mean we most likely aren't going to be resigning Hassan Reddick in the first place. So getting a guy either, like, if you want to get Boogie Basham, that'd be fun. But I love the upside of Jason Away. You know, Cliff Kingsbury's all, like, crazy random shit. Get a guy with unlimited potential, Jason Away here. It's going to be awesome. Honestly, I, I love that pick. As much as you guys probably don't, <laughs> I love the pick. So teams that could use corners. Um, technically, Washington can use corners. Maybe not this high of a pick on one, but um, they could definitely use corners. Uh, Bears, no. Rams, not really. Uh, but definitely over here. So is there any team that wants to trade up within these three? Because we don't need to get a corner immediately, given how there's still Tyson Campbell on the board. Um, is there any team that might want to trade up for a Hamilcar Rashad or um, a lineman? I don't really think so. I think this is just where we take Paulson Debo. Perfect scheme fit here. Um, I've been doing this for a little while. I think it's just a fun spot. You know, you might as well take him. He's going to be a fun little gadget weapon for you guys. And that leaves, of course, Washington with an interesting choice here. So Tamori and Terry is a little bit like Chris Olave to me, to the point where it might be a little too homogenous. Chris Olave would definitely be a really fun weapon. But there's Amon Ross St. Brown here, who's a fast twitch, bursty weapon that has first round potential. 
that to me is somebody who's going to be a little bit more fun on this squad. Uh, somebody who I've started to have a little bit higher of an opinion on. Hopefully he doesn't have the injury problems that I saw him get in the um, Pac-12 championship. But with his ceiling, that's a pretty damn good player. He can play slot. I know, I believe you guys have Isaiah Wright there right now. No pun intended. But, I mean, you can't have Wright over Amon Ross St. Brown. So, obviously, I think this is going to be the fun weapon. If you want to use him on the outside, because he can be used on the outside. He's been used as a perimeter guy this year. Um, that would be fun. But he really is a true slot weapon if you guys want to use him there. His versatility will probably lead him to gain drafted higher than this. But... Shoot for the fences, man. Shoot for the fences. Now, the Bears, they're stuck here. They're like, shit. We, we, got, we still can get a quarterback, which, of course, the Patriots didn't get one given how Rondell Moore's on the board. So there's still Mac Jones here, which I, I am very surprised to see TDN drop him to 101 because he's definitely not going 101. So, of course, TDN is uh, messing up big time. But this is where the Bears could take a quarterback if they wanted to, if they wanted to sit Mac Jones. But the funny thing is, guys... Why sit Mac Jones? There's no point in sitting Mac Jones. If you're getting Mac Jones, you want to start it right away. Mac Jones is not the dude who you need to sit. He's just a sure high floor, low ceiling gun. He's not a gunslinger even. He's just a, excuse me, he's just a, like, a, again, as I said, high floor, low ceiling type of guy. Somebody who can drop in like an Alex Smith. Somebody who doesn't need time to sit. That's not what this team needs. If you want to get Cal Trask, who has a much higher upside, in my opinion, than Mac Jones, 100% understandable, but I see A.J. McCarron here with Mac Jones, not to be uh, cheap by going after the other Alabama quarterback who kind of looks the same as Mac Jones and a uni, but again, I'm not a huge fan of this pick right here. Bears fans, try to fight me, but I, I don't think you're going to win. Looking at the guards and tackles here, I don't see enough value. This is a perfect spot for a trade down. With a team that wants to be trading up possibly for a weapon, that team is the Green Bay Packers. So the Packers pretty much have back-to-back -back picks in this round. So the Packers are going to be trading up, not trading back. So, oh, crap. Here we go again, guys, with the trades that uh, we can't do because interdivisional. Looking at the Bears roster again, um, unfortunately, there's not really a route that we can go that is like very beneficial overall. But we could definitely get some interior defensive line presence here with Jordan Davis if we wanted to. Uh, but this is going to be an interesting one. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this. I'm going to be reaching for a guy who arguably was um, the the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, Haskell Jarrett. He's uh, had 22% pass rush win rate, and that on a team like the Bears, where you kind of live, breathe, and die by your defense, I think that's a good vibe. Honestly, we're going to be doing it. Haskell Jarrett's going to be jumping. I think this is a kind of the area where he's going to be taken in the real draft. So keep your eyes out for that. I think he could jump a guy like Jordan Davis, a guy like Darius Stills, who I like possibly more than Haskell, but given how good Haskell Jarrett's been playing, he's just been lights out, and I think that's very, very respectable and very crucial, and it will probably lead him to getting drafted as one of the top defensive t uh, defensive tackles, like interior defensive linemen in the entire game. So uh, Rams, we've been always trading up to get tackles here, but given the type of presence that, like, obviously we couldn't really trade up that much, given... The fact that, I mean, we saw so many tackles just go for our tackle run the first. And there's not really too much great value left. This could be another spot where we're looking to trade down. And uh, given the fact that there are pass rushers here, we could be taking Hamilcar Rashid if we want to. Again, Hayden, Aiden Hutchinson is going to be going back to school. I hope I remember that <laughs> in the next video. I hope I do remember that. Uh, given the, the need of tackle, we could possibly not trade down. But looking at teams that could take a tackle, um, it's pretty much the uh the Seahawks and that's pretty much it I mean we could look at the Bills as well if they want to but I don't really see it so I think this is where the Cheeseheads are going to be wanting to move up with the Rams so now we're going to get an actually a good pick here I, I do that every time and I sometimes just forget about this division bullshit but um Rams they're going to be trading up which is funny because arguably these two are going to be facing off against each other in the playoffs so, um, a fifth rounder does seem, a second and a fifth to move up uh, that many spots seems a little bit light. So, we're going to be doing a fourth and we're trading back a seventh just to keep it fair. Um, you just got to, you just got to keep it a little bit fair. Some of these trades, I guess the mathematical model is kind of stupid to the point where I even will like say no. Uh, with this being said, Chris Olave is on the board. That would be a really fun option. Tyson Campbell is also on the board if you want to get an aggressive corner. So that's the real question here. Do you want to go Chris Olave or Tyson Campbell? Because we could be easily going for um, a guy similar to Kadarius Tony with the next pick. 
I'm glad that Des Newsom's up. They finally gave him some respect. But we got to go Chris Olave here. I know he's way too similar to Devontae Adams. But, dude, I don't think that... I mean, again, I just talked about homogenization with um, the Washington football team. But at this spot, I mean, you have Aaron Rodgers. I think the separators are the best guys for him. If we're going to be honest, I think he puts in the perfect spot. It's like you might as well just get somebody who can separate. He has elite separation skills. So I'm going to definitely be going Chris Olave here. They're going to have two very good picks at the spot. Plus they have an extra second next year. I think the Chiefs heads will be pretty fine with that because they lost out on Rondale Moore. And, I mean, to be honest, you can get Chris Olave in a next year second for that. I think I would take that any day of the week. Leaving, of course, Boogie Basham to be still sitting here for the Browns. I, again, I love this pick. Uh, just a very fun pick overall. He's a very highly touted type of pl- uh, prospect for them. So you might as well go that route, right? Definitely somebody who I'd be 100% interested in. Boogie Basham is a stud. Now, uh, Dolphins, where do we go with you guys? We could be going for edge help, but I think that obviously the way we want to go is more of that linebacker route. Cameron McGrone's on the board. I'm not a huge fan of Cameron McGrone. Um, Jabril Cox would be a good guy in this lineup. I'm debating between Jabril Cox and Chaz Surratt because Chaz Surratt's a fun gadget player. I mean, like he could be the next, um, well, I don't, I hate that I bug out on people's names, but, um, it's other, either Jabril Cox or Chaz Surratt here, uh, have them interchangeably. Both of them are really good athletes. Uh, Chaz Surratt would be fun. Uh, man, I'm really, I'm so pissed. I'm forgetting the guy's name. It's on the tip of my tongue, but, um, he's definitely been a very good, uh, blitz weapon. So if you guys want to look at a guy like Jabril Cox, he is going to be a bit older. He's going to be 23, but then again, same thing with Chaz. Chad's going to be even older, right? He's going to be an ancient-ass dude. So it's all it's always up to you guys. Chad Surratt, former quarterback as well. I think we got to go Jabril Cox here, though. Uh, Jabril Cox has a higher upside than Chaz. I've seen Chaz kind of disappear in the run game. Jabril Cox is a really good cover linebacker, and he's going to be fun. Very similar to a Raekwon McMillan, in my opinion. So if you're going to be able to get him in the second round, I don't think that's too shabby. Now, Ravens, that leaves you guys. Of course, I usually trade up with you for Jason Away. That didn't happen this time, right? Uh, Aiden Hutchinson would be a fun option if he were declaring. Joe Tryon, I think, is somebody who we might sneakily try to get in the next round. Leaving the Ravens being able to try to target a safety. And that safety is Javon Holland. I don't know why the hell Paris for it. This, their rankings are just bugging. Uh, Javon Holland is a very versatile weapon. Can play slot corner if you want him to. Can play strong safety, free safety, whatever you want. He's definitely a very stable piece, and he would work really well in that defense. I like him a lot there. Uh, leaving, of course, the Buccaneers. I mean, there's a plethora of interior defensive linemen on the board. And Marvin Wilson's a fun-ass dude. I mean, Tyler Shelvin would be a good pick here. Darius Stills. All these dudes. Jordan Davis as well. Uh, Marvin Wilson's a stud. I mean, we've been talking about it for years now, how good Marvin Wilson is. Just because it's not the best situation for him and he's had a drop-off, that's okay. He's an absolute animal, and I think he would reach that potential next to Vita Vea. Replacing in Duncan Sue. Now, uh, Titans, where do we go with you guys? Uh, we did this last time. I think it's cute. I think it's adorable. We're going to be going Jordan Davis, pairing him up with Aziz Ojolari, having the Georgia boys pair up. I think it's adorable. I think it's fun. We're definitely going to be picking that up. And, of course, Seattle, this is going to be, I mean, this is an obvious pick here to me. It's either going to be Jackson Carmen, Tevin Jenkins, and, again, I think you need a left tackle. So I think uh, Jackson Carmen's going to be the pick. I've been doing this for, I think, 10 weeks or something now. It's so worth the pick, too. Honestly, like, for people who say that you don't need a tackle, you guys are freaking blind. <laughs> like, you need Russ to be able to stay alive, for one. And, number two, Dwayne Brown's old. He's dying. He's ancient. It's not fair to him. And, of course... That leaves the Bills selecting Chaz Surratt. I mean, him in the Bills uni, that is going to be fun. He might be older, but dude, he pair, him pairing up with a Tremaine Edmonds and Matt Milano would be quite a cr- crazy-ass trio. So I love that pick so much. You know what's insane is the fact that Tyson Campbell's falling. I don't intend on this happening, by the way. Um, leaving, of course, I mean, the Green Bay Packers could trade up again. I mean, we got our, we got our wide receiver weapon right there. It's just a two-spot jump. And with Tyson Campbell on the board, there's other teams that are vying for the pick. The Giants are trading up twice. After trading their first-round pick, they're trading up twice. With a team that's kind of a competitor, but, I mean, with the amount of... I mean, the Bear, I mean the, uh, the Rams aren't going to be taking Kadarius Tony, So they're going to be doing whatever they can to be able to get to salvage some options here. Um, we're going to see if a fourth can get it. What is going on? I don't, I don't understand this. They need a third-round pick. So, guys, that's extremely unrealistic. We're unfortunately going to have to back off of that. That seems extremely stupid to me, obviously. Like, it's really fucking dumb. 
So, of course, we're going to go uh, with more of the wide receiver weapon in Kadarius Tony at this spot. Uh, a little bit annoying that that's the case. That's, a, that's what it had to happen. But that leaves the Rams being able to choose Walker Little here. Uh, I think that's going to be... I, I don't know why they keep rating him so lowly, so poorly. Uh, he's been an excellent tackle at Stanford for multiple years now. It's not his fault that uh, he has a little dip in production when his quarterback sucks. Leaving, of course, the Packers to go after Tyson Campbell. Uh, don't really need to explain this. Him pairing up with Jair Alexander would be quite the insane duo. So, I love it. Honestly, you got your weapon in... Um, and what, I'm bugging. Why am I bugging? Chris Olave. It would have been fun to get St. Brown brothers on the same team, right? But Tyson Campbell and Olave, along with an extra second round pick next year, that seems like money to me. Of course, screwing the Chiefs out of a true linebacker here. We could definitely be looking at Cameron McGrone, though. If we want to look at the wide receivers, if we want to go after somebody, Tylen Wallace would be a fun pick at the end. Um, but let's just check out the guys on the board because... Again, you, there's no real good value for the pick. There's a guy like Brevin Jordan on the board. And to be honest, a team like the Bengals could definitely trade up and use a guy like that. Um, let's look at what the Bengals have been doing. They got Dylan Redunds as well as um, Patrick Sertan. So they've been helping that defense out. Might want to help out the offense too. Brevin Jordan's more of a pass-catching tight end. You can use him with a Drew Sample as a pair. I think that's going to be a fun option. I, you know... Uh, sue me, guys, if you guys don't like that pick, but we're going to be doing it. Bengals trading up with the Chiefs because, of course, the Chiefs are not going to be, like, there's there's no value for them at that spot. So, I mean, a seventh round is not going to be enough. We're going to send the fifth in and request that sixth back. That's going to be more understandable to be able to, like, move up. Um, and the Chiefs accepted the offer, uh, leaving us to get Brevin Jordan here out of Miami. Again, Cameron McGrone's probably not the best option leaving us to end off the second round right there as the computer fan goes off. Wonderful timing, right? So I thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Let's keep smashing that like button. Hit that sub button. Notification squad, you know who you are. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.